What's up guys, welcome to another video. Today we are gonna be working on the computer, that's why we're in this sort of looking at the camera over there next to the computer, because we're gonna do some stuff in Illustrator again. Today we're doing some isometric typography. Here's an example just in, if you Google isometric type, it's type that's at an angle um, and has dimensions to it. It looks really good as you can see in some of these cases, um, but obviously quite restricted because you're stuck with those angles, but it can create some really good effects. But I'm going to go through the real basics of it. The reason why I'm going to go through the basics is so that once you've got the basics, you can then just build upon that uh, rather than me go through something really elaborate that's something you're going to find really tricky. So first of all, open up Google and do uh, a Google search for isometric grid illustrator. Um, and you'll see one where it starts off accurate isometric grid, te grid template for illustrator. Click on that. Uh, and thanks to Taylor Hoganson, sorry, I forgot your name wrong, but he's uh, made us a little uh, grid template. Hope you find it useful. Yes, we do. Thank you very much. Click on that and it will automatically download. Once it's downloaded, double click on it and it will open up in Illustrator for us. Okay, we want to do a few things before we get started. Uh, for me, I'm going to change the document setup to pixels just because that's the way I work. With these uh, grid lines, they're colored red at the moment. I'm going to take out the color and just give them a light gray. Lock that layer and add a layer above it. Then we want the pen tool, uh, which is P on the keyboard, and just click on the pen tool. Um, and then uh, one of the major things we need, we need to go to view and make sure smart guides is turned on. Reason why we need smart guides is because it'll make our job a lot easier because it automatically, as you can see here, see me in a bit it will lock to all the different points on the triangle. So when we're drawing, it just literally do it for us. We just have to click and drag. Uh, let's have a black line. Uh, mine's just one point with this. And we are going to start off with just drawing the flat letters uh, uh, going up this, um, uh, this angle here. And the measurements I use for a letter are um, five triangles down and three triangles wide. That works for most letters apart from like M and W just because they're so big and three uh, triangles wide. Um, and I'll show you why, why I chose that because specifically for letters like E that have um, five separate horizontal components, it just works out balance as well. So we start off with the T, do one down, one across, and then four down. As you can see, the smart guys are doing all the work for us. We just need to plot the right points. What it reminds me of are those little cube blocks. I don't know if you use them in um, uh, your math lessons, so when you're counting and doing really simple sums when you're a child. Uh, that's what those little blocks uh, are a bit like. I go on the Y. Have to be a bit creative because we're doing typing blocks. Creative, how you make the alphabet. If you need inspiration, then just Google uh, image search isometric type or look on Pinterest for some inspiration. So yeah, when we come to the E and we're doing each of the stems that stick out, it just works well with five because it just has an even it just makes it easier doing these five components. So now we've done done the flat part of the type, we now give it some dimension. You can make this as wide as you want, but I'm just gonna make it like one triangle or one block wide. And you literally just go around adding that to your type. You can do it the other way around, going up the other angle. Uh, totally up to you. But what we're trying to create, I'm just going to know, is these square blocks. So we're trying to replicate that throughout the whole of the type. Once you get into it, it's a fairly simple process. Remembering to do the in innermost parts. Go 
Hey, there we go. Finished. I've given it a one drawing or one block spacing between each. You can add, add or remove that if you want to. So now we've done uh, the basic outline. You can then shade your type either with a color or like we're doing, leave it black and white and just shade it with some um, halftone dots. And I'll show you how to quickly produce those halftone dots now. So what we want to do is lock that layer we've just done create a new layer and make sure that's in between or underneath the uh, type layer that we just created. Get the pen tool again. No, no, what we want to do is get the circle tool, create a circle, uh, and even circles, hold down shift key, remove the stroke and just fill it with black. Now we want to make it quite small because it's going to be in the part of the T there as a pattern. Uh, that's about right. So once we've got the dot, we just want to drag it over to our swatches, drop it in there and automatically make a pattern. Now, if we double click on that, it will open up the pattern generator. And we want to try and make a half tone dot so it's, um, the dots will be offsetted. So we change the type style, uh, the tile type to brick by brick and we want it on half. Now we just need to give it some space. So uh, making sure that the um, maintain width and height proportions is on. We're just then going to keep going through the numbers, just seeing oh, it's got a nice even bit of space around it. That looks good. Uh, just give it a name. And then done. So we've got now got our pattern. Now what we can do is get the pen tool, uh, make sure the fill is that pattern, and then we can just fill parts of letters with that pattern. And what I'm going to do is do opposites on each letter. So the side on the T and the, the tops parts of the Y. And then the sides of the P. And the tops of the E. Okay, we're happy with what we've got there. We can turn the grid off to see what it looks like. Now we're gonna make a copy of this because, so lock those layers, turn them off, create a new one, paste it into that. And then what we're gonna do is select all the part, all the pattern areas because at the moment we can't change the color of that. I'm gonna go object, expand, okay. And then just merge. Now that can be, we can change the color of that. Uh, then we want to go object, path, outline, stroke. Combine that. And then we should be able to change the color of, the color of everything. Yes. So uh, I haven't got any swatches in at the moment. So I'm going to go to the little drop down, open swatch library, go to gradients, and we want spectrums. And then we want to uh, actually first in Pathfinder go little drop down, make compound shape, expand that so that when we add a gradient in it, it goes through the whole thing rather than in individual circle. And click on that spectrum, take out the green and yellow and red just so we've got a three color one. Oh yeah, pretty happy with that. And then add a nice dark blue background I think there we go so that's how you make some isometric uh, type in Illustrator that's a simple method if you think it's simple uh, but go away and you can just then start playing with stuff the endless uh, what you can do with this and you can make some really interesting artwork but let me know in the comments section below if you've got any questions about what I've been doing but otherwise subscribe, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.